Welcome everyone. Welcome in the subject transportation planning and management. This is already first lecture about the modes of transportation. But uh, to go in a very detail, I would like to uh, to like instruct each and everyone that you can follow the same lecture for the subject of transportation planning and management, of course, and as well as highway and traffic uh, engineering. So these are the two courses which covered in the same lecture with each and every almost course content at the uh, undergrad level of the uh, civil engineering. At the postgraduate students, they can also follow my channel for the pavement design and analysis for the subject research methodology, how to write article, and also for the, for the uh, subject sustainable development and, and uh, construction as well. And you can also follow uh, Dr. Ali uh, for the advanced structural analysis. This subject is about transportation planning and management. So first of all, we would uh, try to uh, understand the basic theme of the uh, transportation planning. So transportation planning can be defined so which the planning is required for the purpose to operate, provide and for the management of the facilities and services for the mode of transportation through which we can achieve safe, faster, comfortable, convenient, economical and sustainable environmental friendly modes through which we can move the people and goods. So this is the, the, the com kind of a complete definition for the subject of a transportation planning. When we talk about that how we can manage, so when all those things such as uh, to achieve safer, comfortable, convenient, economical, when we put all of them together and when we talk about the management and also as well as to make things practically possible, then we lead it towards the transportation planning and management means to organize each and everything. So today topic is about modes of transportation, the different type of a modes such as air, water, land use, uh, like railways, uh, etc. exist, which uh, basically refer towards the different modes of transportation. So in this lecture, we will try to understand each and everything in quite detail. First of all, to go in a very detail, I would try to give you the brief idea that what is the difference between transportation and transport. Look, there is only one difference between transport and transportation, and that is the transport is for the public to move from one place to another, while transportation is actually the moving or uh, kind of a movement of a people from point A to point B. So anything through which are uh, like kind of a mode which is used to uh, uh, kind of a transport the people from one place to another is actually referred to the transportation. Uh, the other difference is the transport is a common word or which is used in the British and uh, and uh, uh, kind of a African, Australian and uh, New Zealand uh, English, they call it transport, while the transportation is actually the American uh, English or the, or the way how they are going to pronounce for that. But the general definition or the, the kind of a main difference between both of them is transportation is a movement of a goods and people from one location to another while transport is actually the mode or the service type. When we talk about the function, so what we can achieve through transportation, as I usually uh, instruct my student that there are basic three elements to live in life, such as food, shelter, uh, but I also enhance their, enhance their the, uh, like food, shelter, and clothes are the basic necessities to live in this world. But I also call I, I also told them that you need to include the fourth one as well, which is transportation. Because if we if we don't have the the commuter service or we cannot commute, then we will be kind of a stuck at a, at a one place. If the system is more effective, through that we can enable the social interaction and economic transaction. Means the uh, money will circulate. And it will also enable us to, to move in terms of the social interaction from one place to another. Through the same service, we also 
uh, facilitate the people or we can also ensure the mobility of the access for the people and of the goods as well. So now we would like to uh, understand that what are the modes of transportation. As I already mentioned, there are different type of a transport such as air, water, road, railways, pipelines, cables, and space and so on. So we will try to understand each and every one with, uh, with the different from each other and what are its characteristics as well. This is a transportation process. So transportation planning or transportation uh, planning is a process through which we look at the current state of transportation in the region, in the country, in the city for the future transportation need through which we can combine all of that with the elements such as what will be its goals, what will be its policies and, and what are its kind of a main object. So is if you can see here from the very top to uh, achieve that vision and goals we need to define our objective and for the objective we need the identification that exactly what type of a facilities is needed for the community and then we also the uh, the next phase is alternative what type of alternative exist to fulfill those objective and then we are going to uh, the uh, analysis in evaluation stage and then we have the uh, approval through which we can also assign the budget and funds and then the last uh, phase is about project development and operation so the internal factors which actually move this whole process moving from the vision to the monitoring or from the objective to the vision and that thing so many factors are involved such as regional uh, agencies local government and then we also look to the user and the and those people who actually live there their interest we also look to the to the uh, private sector we also uh, need kind of a legislation services as well we also need approval from the states and from the federal authorities for the uh, for the uh, approval of this whole process. So in a very short word to achieve a kind of a objective or vision or mission or goals so many factors are involved after that we actually come up with some kind of a planning or objective to fulfill. So what is the purpose of the transportation planning and of the transportation planning so you need to uh, you uh, each and every student need to understand the basic uh, difference between both term transportation planning is the process through which we uh, look or uh, analyze or monitor the current state of transportation in the same region in the city in the country to design for the future transportation need while to combine all those goals vision mission policies uh, etc all those together so this is transportation planning when we talk about planner so the transportation planner is responsible to study analyze and plan okay, look there are three factors for the transportation planner number first is to study the second is to analyze and then the third stage is to plan for the different alternative of the transportation project through which we can uh, uh, like uh, facilitate the people and as well as uh, the main uh, target or the main uh, objective is to fulfill the vision and mission. So if the transportation planning and planner are working uh, actively, if they all are uh, integrated planner and they're planning the whole process is uh, integrated so we can establish a vision, mission and goals as well. We can also fulfill and demonstrate the influence or impact of a demographic. So like we can also uh, kind of a define the, uh, that, uh, the uh, in terms of a demographic uh, importance, the transportation planning is quite important. And we can also assess and analyze the future opportunities and challenges. In a simple word, for example, if someone is living in an outskirt, he can come from that rural area to the uh, urban area to to uh, 
kind of establish or enable or empower his uh, economic needs and also we can identify the long-term and short-term options and goals as well through the transportation planning the next topic is about which is uh, the the basic theme of this uh, lecture is about modes of transportation as i already mentioned we have those five to six important modes so let's try and try to understand one by one the first one is about but to go in a very detail the first one is we will try to understand that what is the role of transportation through transportation if we don't have our transportation we may become aesthetic we may become uh, we, we may uh, cannot move from one place to uh, another place so if we don't have a transportation maybe or daily household activities may be constrained we may be not able to uh, fulfill all those all those household activities it also gave us the locational choice to work live at one place and also go to another place for the purpose such as accommodation such as uh, earning money such as uh, leisure activities and shopping and um, as well as uh, for the uh, leisure purpose as well it also uh, enable the labor mobility as well which is a, is a is a very important factor and indicator in the in the uh, for the uh, stability of the country if the lobe if the labor force is not able to move so your construction project each and each and everything may be stopped it also enhance the economic efficiency so that means like each and every day we need uh, so many stuff to, to like live for example it also enables the goods movement for example when you go to the to the uh, shop so we need like milk powder sugar flour oil etc so all those things are actually transported from somewhere else so through transportation if the if there is no concept of transportation the does the supply of all those material for the for the uh, for the everyday household or for the everyday life may be not possible it also play a very important role in terms of the health safety defense and natural disaster as, uh, as well if you talk about the transportation planning as i mentioned before planning is a process through which we can define the goals the investment the vision the mission as well as for the purpose to move the people and goods from origin to the destination so basically we have the three basic stages the first one is about the planning process in the planning process we have the three basic stages the, the very first one is about study and research stage through that stage we analyze to see the current demand of that specific uh, transportation need and then we are going to forecast so like forecast means that we are officially going to formulate the plan to predict the future travel demand and recommendation to fulfill the traffic uh, demand and how we can achieve that traffic demand and then the last stage is about evaluation the evaluation is a way through which we give a proposal through which we can uh, achieve all those uh, satisfactory demand as well as the uh, alternative and then it goes to the monitoring and review so monitoring and review is the stage at a, at a, in the hand of a professional expert people so now the planning process is basically to give the uh, the kind of a uh, alternative to uh, solve that specific problem and then it goes to the uh, monitoring stage and then in the last it go to the implementation implementation means when the project development start so we will also just give uh, the short brief introduction to the sustainable transportation planning as well because we cannot uh, eliminate the word sustainable from the transportation planning so sustainable when we bring sustainability so sustainability means to coordinate between land use and transportation planner through which we can provide the cooperative interaction between planning design and operation of the transportation services that means to 
to uh, draw such type of a model to plan for the future needs as well as for the present generation without compromising uh, on the interest and resources of the future generation. So means to maintain the balance between transportation, transportation related energy and also to use minimize or like minimum use of resources which is actually a kind of a right of the future generation. Through, uh, through uh, sustainable transportation planning, we can also encourage the different type of uh, modes through which we can enhance efficiency and also provide high level of mobility and uh, services and safety through sustainable transportation planning. <coughs> if we talk about the scope of the function of transportation planning, so the scope is uh, through which we forecast the future population and employment growth in which through which uh, we also use uh, the land uses in the region to identify major growth corridor as well as through uh, transportation planning function we can also identify the current and projected in the future project as well in the in the uh, future uh, problem which may uh, happens and also we can uh, we can plan and develop for the short-term and long-term goals <clears throat> so the, those are the key issues which i have identified uh, in the underdeveloping countries specifically in asia such as pakistan and india so the the apart from all those uh, all those problems so the the very major problem is if we start from here the uh, automobile uh, dependency is in the underdeveloping country they usually build so many roads and this is a, a kind of a conventional conventional way of uh, development that uh, building more roads and construction that means is a uh, development but uh, if we take the same example to the nowadays uh, system which we call sustainable transportation that is completely contrast if you talk about uh, equity means uh, equality in terms of a uh, transportation services are uh, replanning for the cars and also research and uh, innovation is also needed that what will happen in the future as well uh, governance is also very big issue because all those people who hold the power uh, they are not even expert in the same field so like for example you can imagine the uh, the, the core difference between develop and uh, under developing country that in underdeveloping the politician actually decide about those uh, future pro like uh, kind of a project that what they gonna need or what they gonna build but in the developing country actually the people decide through the uh, public participation that what is the people or the community or the society demand so according to that then the state or the government act accordingly the next important uh, indicator is about safety and public health. So how we can ensure through our planning process the safety and uh, public uh, safety are like uh, safeguarding the uh, public within the uh, transportation system. If we talk about uh, resilience and uh, security system, so like many cities are uh, adopting the uh, the uh, intelligent transportation system which we call ITS so such type of a system actually combine coordinate and uh, through uh, automatic responses for the transportation uh, policies through which we can optimize the increasing smartness and uh, efficiencies so however through control the sensing system cameras and uh, so on we can control we can uh, we can um, uh, ensure the safety and security of the people within the uh, premises so how much people are actually rely on the public transportation reliability is actually a very important factor so like if I for example if I'm each and every day I need to go from home to work so which type of a transportation system I'm using if it's a public transport so how much I can rely rely means on which you can trust actually trust means for example if there is a 10 minute or uh, like kind of a 10 kilometer distance and the operating speed is 60 or like 65 or 70 kilometer per hour 
So if the uh, if it's uh, if through the same ride, if I can reach to my work from home within 15 minutes, so I can rely on work because it will take the same time either in the public transport or either in your own car. And the very last one is about through transportation system through public transportation. Is it kind of a, a wide shift in improved system like uh, the simple question is the transportation planner and uh, the uh, administration need to ask from their own planning or from like themselves the plan which they are going to present or which they are going to launch or which they are going to build is it the one through which we can we can uh, use the uh, strategy of a, a wide shift and improve a wide shift and improve is a kind of a term which was first of all introduced in uh, germany through which uh, they were actually pulling the people from their own car and then they were trying to improve their local public transport according to the public need or public demand so the next stage is about transportation planning so we have the four basic levels in level one we actually working on the with how we can bring the balance within the city the second level actually work on the integration of the multimodal network system in which we actually connect multimodal means when when there is more than one mode connected okay and then we have the uh, the level number three through which we actually integrate different type of a like single mode but different type of a networking and then last one when we plan design and operate okay so those are the four transportation planning levels First, so our first topic is about rail transport rail transport is uh, is a system which actually runs on the track uh, so those track we can call them rails or railroad okay uh, rail transport is one of the most uh, important uh, kind of a economical commonly used uh, with a very effective uh, carriage or a long distance as well as it have as well as for the uh, short distance as well so this system is it, it actually runs on the metal or like rails so it is uh, it have a lot of uh, frictional resistance okay it uh, also have it also actually need a kind of a very massive loads of uh, wagons and carriages uh, and uh, carriage way are actually moving on all those tracks trains are powered through locomotive locomotive means engine okay so those engines are actually uh, powered or dragged through electricity or through diesel so complex signaling system may be utilized if there is a kind of a uh, intersection or if the same rail transport is is uh, is uh, sharing its right of way with other transportation such as land use and air use trains are more fast and they have the least affected by usual weather so they have a very less chances of a uh, turbulence from the rain or from the fog compared to other transport mechanism such as air and road transport rail, uh, rail transport is bitterly organized in other transport because it has very fixed route and schedules its services are more certain, uniform, and regular as compared to other transport. It have adoptive, including passenger railways. It it uh, can be constructed in the underground, or uh, above the ground, or uh, in the tunnel as well. So, in a short terms, we can uh, drag a lot of locomotives, a lot of uh, engines, sorry, a lot of uh, boogies through a single engine that's why it's a very commonly economical in terms of a freight logistic transportation its advantages are that it is more faster than road transport <clears throat> all those students who are interested to learn more about railway engineering nowadays there is a term which is called high speed railway line which is called hsr so according to the latest uh, information and definition here their, their uh, speed is nowadays uh, for the recorded purpose so all those trains so like what do you think what why why we call 
high speed railway line because they are going over 100 no because high speed railway line will be considered if its speed is at least up to 300 km plus it is also suitable for the bulky goods bulky good means all those heavy container kind of a container type of a goods either in the uh, international market or for the local purpose as well it is also economical for the long distances as well as for the short distance there is only one problem in the uh, short distance which we will also cover in the uh, disadvantages as well because it need handling actually so that's why it have little bit highly handling cost the rest the railway transport is economical for the long distance as well all those goods are actually protected in the container so there is no kind of a causes from the sun rain wind or dust or like monsoon uh, season as well okay uh, is also it can operate regularly they have a fixed uh, schedule time okay so if you talk about uh, disadvantages it need a lot of a lot of money because the construction co uh, cost is quite higher because each and everything is uh, consists of a very huge infrastructure so it need like kind of a huge money okay it have also qu uh, quite high overhead cost because you need so many people to kind of a technical staff people's uh, operator and uh, the people who can control uh, the whole system so it have also sometime uh, like need a lot of people help as well most of the uh, services are actually run through uh, monopoly system so like uh, the system is actually uh, running uh, through the subsidized system which is so like this is the basic definition in the developing and uh, underdeveloping country the, the developing country actually they are earning from the railway and we need each and every year more and more subsidy only to run the system because there is a lot of flows and also we need to shift the people tradition from the road to the railway line as well and also it cannot provide the door-to-door -door service because it can only provide the services to the places which have the direct route like direct route means only it can provide the service where the railway road or railway line is constructed and also its coverage is kind of uh, kind of uh, limited because it cannot change its lane as well as it cannot go beyond that construction line so the second type is about if of the more transportation is uh, road transport so the road transport means all those goods which is kind of a quite common example for each and everyone to, uh, all this service which actually run by the pavement or road surface road is actually the route between two destination which has been either paved or unpaved but uh, can be used through motorized transport or non motorized carriages okay the cost of construction and operating uh, and also to maintain uh, in the road transport is little bit uh, economical and less as compared to railway because sometimes road transport is only used for the carrying of the people and good from the from the rural area as well as to the uh, urban area as well through road transport we can integrate the same road transport easily with water with air and with the railway as well it also commute it also provide a connection service between rural and urban area it advantage is that it that we need the less capital amount so uh, it, it uh, did not cost or like consist of so much huge uh, investment is like not needed as compared to railway and uh, air transport so the cost to develop and work uh, is a little bit less expensive as compared to road road as compared to uh, like railway it also provide door-to-door -door service it doesn't matter if the road is paved or not paved it is uh, adoptable service so like road transport has an uh, incredible uh, preferred advantage or different method of transportation through which we can um, we can balance and change the uh, uh, kind of a individual uh, 
uh, perspective without uh, like do not much bothering each other. It, uh, it is also it could be used for the short distances uh, as well it need like less picking cost because the, uh, the size is uh, not too heavy it can also use it can also go through very high speed as well and also the emergency service is only possible in the air as well as in the road transportation. It also need and require less cost to construct as well as less cost to operate as well as less cost to manage the whole thing if we compare it with the railway road as well as with the air, air transportation. <coughs> uh, the, the road transport is, uh, is only the private owned vehicle okay and uh, so like but we cannot use most of the time the railway or air or the water through or like owned vehicles it percentage may be one or like two percent so the road transport a uh, give the freedom to each and everyone is it, uh, it's disadvantages are a little bit more as compared to railway Th uh, the supply may be uh, irregular in nature <coughs> because engine transport is not a uh, like kind of a dependable is railway transport it may be provide uh, like kind of a effect the the uh, dangerous or maybe uh, it uh, cannot give proper response if the nature is not very friendly okay as you can see here in the picture the mishaps or like breakdown is also possible if the if there is a like too much rain or something and also your bulk or like uh, your goods may be damaged. It is also not uh, too much convenient or like uh, uh, admissible for the long distances as well and for the so much heavy loads as well. And also moderate speed. So like uh, the speed of the engine transport is similarly moderate and uh, constrained. Okay, because if it's uh, too heavy, it cannot go uh, like very high speed. Uh, the road transport is also suffering and bleeding from the organization system uh, in underdeveloping countries uh, it ha it don't have too much uh, organization or connection with each other and if you talk about water transport water transport is basically the process of a transport which actually run through barrage boat ship sailboat or like watercraft uh, and uh, it's it, it it actually operate in the sea, ocean, lake, and all are like river. Ship transport is primarily used for the carriage of the people and uh, kind of a non uh, partial good like goods, we generally refer to the uh, cargo. <coughs> Ship transport is often uh, international by nature because uh, we use the water transport when we need kind of a cargo from either in terms of a uh, import or uh, export. So the cargo is uh, carried by more than one mode. So then it convert to the uh, intermodal or it's also called the co-modal transportation system as well. Uh, according to that uh, figure, so water transport could be divided in the two basic uh, component. One is called inland transport, another one is called ocean transport. In the inland transport, it consists of rivers, lakes, and canals, which actually connect through the boats and uh, steamer. If we talk about the uh, ocean uh, transport, it consists of a coastal shipping and uh, overseas shipping, which is directly connected with cargo and passengers. It advantages is that it have the 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 kind of a, so much economical cost as compared to all the all the uh, transportation modes so it because it does not need uh, so much but there is only one problem because because of its speed and of the uh, handling cost so it can also contain a larger capacity okay it have the uh, ability to to uh, bring so much heavy and bulky items such as coal timber oil gas flour wheat etc etc okay it is also quite flexible in the services uh, the safety is uh, it is more safe as compared to road and railway but if we talk about disadvantages it is one of the most slow transport because 
uh, you need to be careful because of the of the inland and uh, in the outland uh, water wave movement etc and disturbance it also provide in the limited area limited area means it can only provide in the oceans canals and river and so on it could also affect through the uh, seasonal character such as uh, snow uh, if we talk about uh, Siberia Russia where the speed is less than five kilometer per hour okay and also if there is a kind of a uh, strong waves or the uh, sinusoidal waves uh, within the uh, within the ocean it could also delay its uh, time it is also not too much reliable because uh, there is a possibility of the losses or like damage okay and it is also not very much suitable for the small businesses as well and also keep in mind that we cannot use the same mode to uh, satisfy the the uh, urgent need or demand the next type is air transportation system the mobility of a man and material by air is called air transport it is one of the most fastest means of transportation if we, if we compare it with water, air or railroad. As a freight transportation is one of the most fast and efficient shipping system uh, through which the valuable businesses such as gold, stones, uh, etc. could be, uh, could be uh, import and export in, uh, within the and outside of the region as well within just in time its uh, advantages is of course it's a very high speed and it have uh, very not so much minimum cost but of course uh, kind of uh, affordable cost it have also strategic uh, importance as well we can also improve uh, a, and increase our strategic importance as well as uh, internal and external uh, defense is also possible through uh, air transportation system and it is also quite easy transport for the costly and light goods uh, as well there is no so much uh, physical barriers such as river mountains and valley etc so so it's also quite useful in the natural climate such as uh, earthquake flood and so on okay it could also use for the uh, agriculture purpose as well such as uh, air spray for the uh, pests and uh, insects which could uh, cause the harm to our crops it's this uh, advantages it have a quite high cost it is more risky a huge investment is needed in terms of the airport construction aerodromes maintenance and so on the next type of the uh, mode of transportation is called pipeline pipeline transportation is uh, the mode through which we can uh, we can transport our goods or material through a pipe liquid and gases are transported in pipeline and uh, chemical stable substances can also be sent through pipeline as well okay other uh, stuff such as uh, refined petroleum uh, fuels oils good biofuels including uh, sewage slurry water and beer and so on could also be uh, import and export as well and uh, send it from one location to another location so the pipe transport example is quite simple as you can see in like your own house the washroom are like type are like a washroom are like toilet water usually go from the house to the main uh, sanitation system so this is one of the one of the best example in your uh, premises inside your house it could also we can also control the pollution and uh, environmental uh, effect as well through uh, pipeline okay it is also more uh, safe its uh, advantage is that it is uh, suitably idle to transport liquid and gases from one place to another it can also go uh, under the water it can also go under the uh, surface as well it also need very less energy consumption it, it also need very less maintenance cost it is more uh, environmental friendly as well it this uh, advantage is that it may be not flexible because uh, it can be used only for few fixed point like be, uh, between few fixed point because if there is a uh, undulation in uh, terms of a uh, places so we may need uh, external energy its capacity cannot be increased uh, cannot be increased once it's fixed or like late 
it is difficult to make to make security arrangement for the pipeline because we cannot uh, protect always and underground pipeline cannot be easily repaired if there is a kind of a leakage or blast or something uh, if we compare all those so we have different type of a characteristic so if we talk about the uh, very first one this one is ship this one is air this one is uh, railway and this one is road transport so if we talk about a distance less than 400 kilometer which one is the best so the best one is road okay if we talk about if we have the distance over or like more than 400 kilometers so the the uh, the first one is about uh, water and air and railway if we talk about the over size or heavy load so the water and railway is the best if we talk about uh, refrigerator system or like through which we can uh, uh, we can um, transport such type of uh, goods which need a specific temperature then of course we can use all of them so the cross-border facility could also be used through all those modes okay and we can also use those uh, not only two uh, for the uh, overseas water air as well as railway and water transport is also possible so if we compare all of them together so you so just uh, this is for your uh, understanding purpose so railway have average speed it also of course dependent on the uh, like uh, schedule as well its frequency is low and availability in different location is also low and flexibility in handling uh, cost is of course high in if you talk about water so the speed is very low but it have the uh, flexibility uh, in terms of a to handle too much cost similarly for the truck and pipeline and air okay so uh, today the very last topic is about intermodal so intermodal is uh, basically a shipping method or like moving cargo which involves more than one kind of a transportation uh, whether truck rail ship or like plane okay intermodal transportation is the use of one or more than one mode or carriages or transport such as good from ship to to the container special uh, standardized container are used for the uh, intermodal transport for the cargo purpose from the trucks freight trains and to the ships it also use the special container through which uh, all those goods can be transferred from the ship to the uh, railway okay only one problem is there in the uh, intermodal that it is quite complex system it as you can see uh, with this uh, very big crane bridge it, uh, it is quite complicated it also take a lot of time to handle each and every container from that ship to the railway and then from the railway to the roll to the uh, railroad so leg time is basically the waiting time or the lose or the or the time which is actually lost to handle a single container okay but uh, through intermodal we cannot address the peak demand of either material foods uh, and etc okay so apart from uh, the uh, apart from all those uh, complexity there are many significant advantage of the mode of the uh, intermodal uh, transportation system as well such as it also produce a very less noise pollution it have also uh, reliable delivery time it also eliminate traffic and custom process as well it also produce linear planning process it have also fixed departure uh, schedule and it also provide the high quality standards and easier planning for the support of a very large cargo as well as you can see here this is the uh, intermodal facility which is actually connected through this uh, container crane uh, from where the the ships actually come at the ocean and from that ocean from that uh, cargo it actually take each and every container from from that boat or ship uh, uh, to the to, to that uh, railway and then it uh, uh, transported to the dry port and from the dry port it transported again through the uh, road transportation so again intermodal which connect more than one mode so at this stage we have the three modes are connected such as rail road and water 
अच्छा यहाँ तक जितना भी टॉपिक था के नाल के रिलेटेड ये आप लोगों का बेसिकली असाइनमेंट होगा तो आप लोगों को असाइनमेंट की डिटेल ऑलरेडी मैंने टॉपिक आप लोगों को दिया हुआ है एक्सप्लेन भी किया है लेकिन मैं चाहता हूँ कि आप लोग ओपन हाउस के नाल में और के नाल की टाइप्स आप लोग खुद से एक्सप्लेन कर लें लास्ट का जो हमारा टॉपिक है वो है मल्टी मॉडल ट्रांसपोर्टेशन का मल्टी मॉडल ट्रांसपोर्टेशन जो है ये हमारा वो ट्रांसपोर्ट का मोड है अभी तक हम लोगों ने सिर्फ चार ट्रांसपोर्ट पढ़े थे वाटर एयर वाटर एयर रेलवे और ओशन को अब हम लोग बात करेंगे जब हम यहाँ पर मर्ज कर दें एक से ज़्यादा ट्रांसपोर्ट मोड को अब हम इसकी बात करेंगे कि कौन सा इफेक्टिव है और कौन से लिहाज से और हम इसको मोनीटर करने का के लिए कौन सा पैरामीटर हम लोग लगाते हैं अब हम इसकी अगर हम लोगों ने कास्ट लेनी हो डॉलर पर टन पर किलोमीटर में या यूरो पर टन किलोमीटर में या रुपीस पर टन किलोमीटर में मतलब क्या है कि कास्ट पर टन पर किलोमीटर में तो इसकी हम लोग मवाजना करते हैं किलोमीटर के साथ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल हमारे साथ जो मोस्ट इफेक्टिव मोड है वो है पाइपलाइन का सेकेंड नंबर पर जो हमारे साथ है वो है बराज का रिवर का इसकी आप लोग डिफरेंट कलर सी भी आप इसको इंडिकेट कर सकते हो और फिर थर्ड नंबर पर जो हमारे साथ है वो है रेलवे रेल का फिर फोर्थ में हमारे साथ है रोड का और फिर लास्ट में हमारे साथ है एयर का एयरक्राफ्ट का जिसको बेसिकली इंडिकेट नहीं किया गया है अच्छा आप लोगों ने शायद देखा हो कि जो हमारे तीन मोड है रेवर रेलवे और रोड के ये इनिशियल में बहुत इसकी जो कास्ट है वो बड़ी बढ़ गई है मतलब इसका जो स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट है वो बहुत बढ़ गया है उसका रीज़न ये है बेसिकली कि यहाँ पर हम लोग हैंडलिंग कास्ट की बात कर रहे हैं या फिर पैकिंग कास्ट की हम लोग बात करते थे इस वजह से इसकी कास्ट इनिशियल में बढ़ गई है फिर विथ पैसेज ऑफ किलोमीटर इसकी जो कास्ट है वो कम से कम हो गई है अब हमारे साथ प्रोज एंड कॉन्स क्या है एडवांटेजेस और डिसएडवांटेजेस मॉडल शिफ्ट के अब हम पहले बात करते हैं एडवांटेजेस की सॉरी डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ मॉडल शिफ्ट की अगर हमारे साथ मॉडल शिफ्ट हो तो फिर उसमें हमारे साथ लॉस ऑफ टाइम बढ़ाता है जो बेसिकली हम इसको अवॉइड नहीं कर सकते वेटिंग टाइम की वजह से या उसमें हमारे साथ पोटेंशियल मिसिंग भी होती है कनेक्शंस वगैरह की इसके लिए बहुत ज़्यादा टाइम आपको दरकार है इसको हैंडल करने के लिए इसको सपोर्ट करने के लिए इसका जो टाइम होता है सपोर्टिंग या जो लेग टाइम होता है वेटिंग टाइम लेग टाइम आप लोगों को मैंने ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन भी किया था तो वो भी बहुत ज़्यादा होता है लेग टाइम वो टाइम फॉर एग्ज़ाम्पल जब कंटेनर पहुँच जाता है पोर्ट पर तो उसको जब तक वो पहुँच जाए और जब तक वो डिलीवर जो रिसीवर होता है उस तक वो पहुंच न जाए तो उस टाइम में जितना टाइम लॉस्ट होता है इसको हम लोग लेग टाइम बोलते हैं और हैंडलिंग के लिए आपको एडिशनल कास्ट की ज़रूरत पड़ती है और इतना ज़्यादा मूवमेंट जब हम लोग करते हैं तो इसके लिए इस इसमें हमारे पास बेसिकली बड़ी बड़ा ख़तरा होता है कि जो हमारे गुड्स होते हैं वो डेमेज होने के भी चांसेस बढ़ जाते हैं और इसके साथ साथ हमारी जो पंक्चुअलिटी होती है मुख्तलफ ऑपरेटर्स की या फिर मतलब जो कोआर्डीशन होती है क्योंकि यहाँ पर हम लोग एक मोड की नहीं पाँच मोड्स की बात कर रहे हैं तो वो भी बड़ी वर्स्ट होती है इसका जो सबसे बड़ा बड़े जो दो फ़ायदे हैं एक ये है कि इसकी जो कास्ट होती है वो कम से कम होती है और दूसरा कि इसकी इस, इसकी वजह से जो हमारे एकोलॉजिकल इफ़ेक्ट होते हैं तो वो बहुत ज़्यादा कम होते हैं 